Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to the workshop. This week, we're getting back to the restoration of our King Amusement Company Supersonic Rocket Ride. Now, this is a kiddie ride from 1972 that we've been doing a full rebuild on for about the last year. Last fall, we cut out the base that supports the bottom of the main drive shaft. Well, actually, my son-in-law, Scott, cut it out. I just ran the camera. I call this piece the drive sprocket stub shaft. The bearing surface on this shaft was chewed up and needed to be repaired. I've been doing a lot of online shopping lately, trying to track down parts that would be suitable replacements for some of the worn out 50 year old parts on this ride. And I think I've finally gathered together enough parts to make a replacement for this shaft. So we have received a few things in the mail. And uh, first off, we received our new bearings for inside of the drive sprocket. Uh, now this, uh, this bearing is a little bit shorter than the old bearing, uh, but this one is a little bit taller. So the uh, stack up of the two of them ends up being about the same. On the OD, we've got about uh, 40 thousandths of an inch more here than on the old one. That's going to give us something to clean up on the inside of that sprocket where it's so damaged. And I don't know if we're going to be taking all of that from the inside of the sprocket, or maybe we'll split the difference and take some from the OD of this. Uh, it really depends what it takes to clean up that sprocket, but uh, that's another job that we can work on now that we've acquired these. I did another little uh, experiment just because I wanted to try something different. This is a package from Send, Cut, Send. Uh, they're another laser cutting service. And uh, what I did was these are uh, the gussets for the stub shaft. At least that's what they should be. Yeah, so these are the gussets for the stub shaft. Now again, uh, these parts did not need to be laser cut. I just uh, wanted to try out their service and I wanted to do it with a piece that was kind of non-critical and wouldn't cost a lot of money just to see how they did. And nice packaging. Uh, it's vacuum packed to this piece of cardboard here. And to go along with that, this package right here should contain a piece of round stock that we can use to make the, uh, the base of that. Yeah, so these are just some three inch rounds. These are gonna have to be bored out uh, so that they slip over the two inch shaft and then our bearing sits on top of this. All right, it's time to start working on the replacement collar for our sprocket stub shaft. We'll face that off and then start drilling a hole through it. We need a two inch hole right through the center of that. I think I might have a reduced shank bit in a larger size. I'll have to go look here. Well, it's not saying no. Yeah, I don't even know where that drill bit came from, but it certainly did the job. It's gonna save me a lot of boring time. Oh, that is 63 64 all but one inch. So we're gonna have to take out the final inch with a boring bar. like 199 <laughs> yeah I think that'll work the last thing I want to do here is cut a little relief into this edge to give a spot for the weld uh, to exist
I burped it in really good. Yeah, that should work really well. So I got this shaft uh, home here in my lathe. I need to do a little bit of machining on it before we can do any more welding. This collar, uh, the front of it here, needs to be pretty much machined flat because that's actually a bearing surface. Most of the strength of this part is the weld underneath, and that's the, that's the heavier weld we put on it back there. So this is going to be uh, skimmed off, make a place for the bearing to sit. And then I have to go in and uh, I'll probably clean up the OD on this just to get rid of the rust. We also have to uh, machine both ends to length. So we need to flip this end over end now so we can set the length of this part of the shaft. I'm looking at trying to line the other lines up uh -oh. to make sure they're right. And are then, they pretty close? Yeah, they're they're pretty good. I think at least these ones I can see over here. job done before we burn the pattern up. How's that one looking? That looks pretty good. I can hit this one all the way down and then switch it because I'm going to crisscross. Right. Looks good. Weld her hot and get her in there. I doubt they're gonna break. Yeah, I don't think so either. Unless me and you are gonna ride on the, the carnival ride. Might break. <laughs> no, I think we have bigger problems. Actually, this, this thing supports almost no weight. All this supports is the drive sprocket. So it, it's, 
it's mostly positioning. I mean, it has a thrust bearing there at the bottom where the yellow tape is. That's where the thrust bearing goes that the sprocket sits on, but it doesn't bear any weight from the from the ride. Oh, because you said everything's on top. Everything's on top on the big bearing. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. And to me, this part here represents a little bit of a turning point in uh, the future of this project. Over the last year, we've done a lot of projects. We've rebuilt the motor. We've rebuilt the gearbox. Uh, we made all those hood ornament pieces for the ride cars. We worked on the lighting package. And if you'd like to see any of those projects, click that link to the left. But none of those projects were 100% necessary. We could have gone out and bought those parts. I only did it because I want to keep the ride as original as possible. But this part right here, we can't go out and buy this. We had to make it. And now that we have it, we're one step closer to putting the ride back together. And that gets me a little bit excited.